the topic for the present video is stability of pharmaceuticals role of moisture humidity and protection strategies so as the name is given mainly the video is regarding the effect of moisture humidity on to the pharmaceutical product stability and how the stability can be improved by protection from the moisture and relative humidity so let's start with the basics see many of the drug substances excipients and the finished products may have sensitivity to the moisture and humidity so hygroscopic nature of the raw material may be there some excipients may be there api may be there or bulk product bulk uh, intermediate formulation material will be there or the finished formulation may be there so materials may have different sensitivity to moisture and the relative humidity the material may gain the moisture or lose the moisture or water content and that's why it may have impact on to the stability and other parameters in different ways so as we are talking about the hygroscopicity we should know what is the meaning or definition of hygroscopicity it is nothing but the ability of the drug substance or material or formulation to attract or hold water from the environment through absorption or adsorption so it may take up the water or it may lose the water so that is the ability of the material but mainly hygroscopy deals with the absorption of the water into the material or adsorption of the water onto the material and in short it means gaining the moisture or gaining the water so this hygroscopic nature may be the inherent property of the material the process may happen at normal room temperature or at some temperatures but depending on to the relative humidity the hygroscopic material will have interaction with the environment the hygroscopicity may be at normal or room temperature so mainly the material will absorb water and its water content may get increased depending on to the percentage of water uptake the materials are divided into different categories like reliquescent very hygroscopic hygroscopic and slightly hygroscopic this information i have taken from the european pharmacopeia and as per that the reliquescent materials are those which absorb the sufficient water and becomes the liquid so many salts are there which show the reliquescent nature then very hygroscopic if increase in mass due to water absorption is equal or greater than 15% then that material is called as very hygroscopic then hygroscopic increase in the mass or weight is less than 15% and equal to or greater than 2% so if the gain in weight is 2 to 15% then that material is called as hygroscopic then slightly hygroscopic increase in mass less than 2% and equal to or greater than 0.2% so that material will be called as slightly hygroscopic and if it is less than 0.2% then it may be called as non hygroscopic so depending on to the moisture uptake percent or water uptake percent the material can be categorized hygroscopicity may have impact in the many ways so first is physical impact physical impact may be 
having impact on the flow properties like loss of flow properties, formation of lumps, and thus affect the powder handling, like in tablet capsule formulations and dry powder formulations, like dry syrup, dry suspension, or powder for suspension. Then granules or blend. So this material handling will get impacted by the moisture. Then change in the appearance, change in description, discoloration may be there, or change in the texture of the material. Sometimes due to moisture, the undesirable odor may get developed, which impact the acceptance of the product by the then is the processing impact and testing impact. So loss or gain in the moisture may lead to loss of hardness or increase in the hardness, decrease or increase in the disintegration time of tablets, increase or decrease in the dissolution and drug release, sometimes dose dumping and erratic drug release profile may be there. Premature drug release in enteric or sustained release formulation may happen. Sticking of capsule formulations, sticking onto the punches or in the dies because of the hygroscopic nature of the blend during tablet compression. Loss in capsule shell moisture makes the formulation brittle. Moisture absorption by the sample during the analysis may lead to erratic results. Sometimes you may have observed the increase in the weight during friability testing for tablets. So that is nothing because of the moisture uptake. Chemical impact. Moisture increase or water content increase may lead to hydrolysis and that hydrolysis may lead to formation of toxic or harmful impurities and nitrosamine in some cases. So it is very important to understand the effect of Hygroscopicity, degradation and increase in the impurity levels, low assay values, increase in the LOD and increase in the water content. So altogether this will lead to decrease in the expiry period, shelf life period, a retest period, less in use stability period or shelf life period will be there if the material is hygroscopic. So, the in use stability period will also get impacted for the moisture sensitive formulations. Then, impact on the costing, safety, and efficacy of the formulation. So, if the material is hygroscopic, that time its handling becomes difficult and it requires low RH. That's why, increase in the cost of handling, manufacturing, and storage as it requires low RH areas. Packaging material cost and transport cost will increase because it will require very specific packaging material and transport conditions. Increase in the cost due to less shelf life, retest period and repeated testing. Then coming to the safety and efficacy. So as we have discussed that impact onto the impurity levels will be there, dissolution will be there and it will have impact on the safety and efficacy. Impact on impurity levels, dissolution, drug release may have great impact on the safety and efficacy. Variation in the absorption of drug and pharmacokinetics may lead to a reduced effect or increased toxicity. Then impact on the microbial market and safety impact or regulatory impact. So increase in the moisture content may lead to increase in the chances of microbial growth and microbial growth may affect the product safety. Then market impact and regulatory impact, less accuracy in dosing and handling problem for the marketed formulations. If the product is manufactured as a dry suspension or syrup to be reconstituted or if it is formulated in a tablet formulation and if it absorbs the moisture then handling problem will be there. 
storage problems will be there when the product is in the market so safety of the formulation when the product is already commercialized that will get impacted failure in the dissolution and other parameters of the marketed product may lead to market complaints moisture absorption in powder for reconstitution formulations can affect the ease of administration and dosing accuracy altogether the market and safety impact will have impact on the market recalls and regulatory non compliance so these are the impacts which may happen due to moisture uptake now coming to the moisture protection strategies so i have divided the strategies into two like packaging strategies and the formulation strategies so first is protection strategies the strategy should start with the risk assessment for the risk of moisture uptake and there should be a mitigation plan during the research phase of the api and the formulation once you have the risk mitigation plan once you have identified the risk then go for the mitigation strategies first is packaging strategy protect from the ingress of environmental moisture use of protective packaging materials for raw materials in process materials and the finished products use of desiccant to protect from moisture desiccant like silica gel molecular sieve canisters in the bottle packs use of the materials packaging materials which provide impermeable packaging blister packs like aloe aloe pack which have less moisture permeation compared to pvc or pvc pvdc packs and you can also go for desiccant embedded blister packs then modified atmosphere packaging map by nitrogen purging in the container and during and after the dispensing of the raw materials packaging operations can be carried out in low moisture areas by using the dehumidifiers or by having the maintained rh of the area by ahu system avoid more head space in the bottles so you can use small container sizes you can use fillers and desiccants labeling instruction for storage and use of hygroscopic materials and pharmaceutical formulations so many of the time it is written on to the labeling part that store in the original pack and remove only one tablet from the blister whenever you are going to administer the tablet or whenever you are going to take the tablet protect from moisture and store at cool and dry place so these are some of the labeling instructions which are observed onto the formulations then formulation strategies so the main strategy is to use the material with low moisture content low moisture grade materials low yellow d grade materials use materials which are less hygroscopic in nature use the manufacturing processes which does not involve the use of water or solvents like dry granulation by direct compression roller compaction compared to the wet granulation dry the materials before use if required so sometimes this practice is followed that material should be dried before using them like starch use non aqueous granulation or coating process perform the manufacturing processes under low humidity levels mainly in case of epirosan tablet epirosan granule formulations low rh is required storage of raw materials and finished product in well designed packaging in the areas where rh is low perform whole time studies and develop in process packs coating onto the tablet with moisture protecting barrier films so nowadays many of the coating material suppliers 
have developed the moisture barrier film coating and those film coating compositions can be used. These may be HPMC based with hydrophobic additives or may be polyvinyl alcohol based. Then drying time optimization after coating process or optimization of the drying time in the products made with the granulation techniques. So these are some of the strategies for stabilizing the moisture sensitive materials and formulations. First of all, risk assessment should be done onto the API, then onto the raw materials, then onto the process, and then control strategy for the moisture sensitive formulations to protect from the moisture and to improve the stability. Packaging, packaging material has a great role onto the stabilization of pharmaceutical formulations which contain the moisture sensitive raw materials. So this is regarding the stability of pharmaceuticals, role of moisture, humidity and protection strategies. I hope you might have got information on the topic and I request you to do like, share and subscribe to this channel and share these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thank you for watching the video.